Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space and another Stamp Timber video. For those new or not aware, during the month of September, a bunch of crafty card making brands uh, collaborate with Simon Says Stamp to celebrate Stamp Timber. And they produce a limited edition exclusive stamp sets that are only available while supplies last and when they sell out they're one and done they're not restocked however i always link to the brands in the description box below my video because there is always tons to choose from and today's video is no exception this collab is with colorado craft company and they did another anita jerum stamp set it's very very cute and i know they have tons of sets with her illustrations along with a whole bunch of other stamp sets and whatnot so links will be below to every what I used today which I was gonna say everything but I actually used just the stamp set that's it I didn't use any wafer dies or any other stamps nothing and kept it fairly simple it it I it felt like it was going to be a little more difficult and then once I started watercoloring I was like and then I had a little surprise when I was watercoloring and uh, yeah, some, some, some additional shimmer that wasn't part of the plan, but it ended up and I'm, I'm okay with it. So if you keep watching, I will show you guys how I made it. Alrighty. So this is the Colorado Craft Company, My Muse, uh, limited edition stamp set. And this main image with the, the little mouse and the, the bouquet of flowers. If you get it and you get the coordinating wafer die set, what I would recommend is die cutting first. And then I've shown this in other videos, you lay the, the excess cardstock that you've die cut from, lay that out, and then use the die cut area to line up the stamp because that long line between the little mouse and his paintbrush and the florals because it's so thin you you saw there that I was like having I wasn't having difficulty I just kind of was you know laying it out but if I was die cutting it you would want to be able to line that up with the die cut versus trying to stamp it and then die cut after if that makes sense so that's what I would do but I didn't bother die cutting it. One, didn't have the dies. And two, I just stamped the image as is. It's, it's so cute. It's so cute. So I stamped it onto Canson XL watercolor paper. And I just used my VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. And I didn't heat emboss it this time. Usually, you know, I've, I've shown in a bajillion videos. When I'm watercoloring, I generally like my images to be heat embossed. Because I like the raised edges. Because they're basically bumper pads, you know, to keep me from making a mess. But... I also intended to do messy watercoloring with this. It was just what was going. So I'm using my Magello Mission Gold watercolors. And for that first little bit, that was real, real time. Now I've sped it up. Um, this didn't take very long to watercolor. It's it's detailed and yet it it's there's just there's not a whole lot here, really. Like you got your little mouse and then you got some florals and leaves and you can do whatever you want. So as I started watercoloring the mouse, I noticed my brush had shimmer in it from whatever project I was doing. I don't even remember at this point. Everything's a blur at this point. But obviously the last time I used this, I had used shimmer, which, and I am 99.9% .9 positive it was the Midas Touch Aqua Shimmer Pen because it's gold shimmer that I had in the brush. And I was fine with it, you know? I was like, this mouse, he's fabulous. He's an artist course he's going to be covered in shimmer and I'll show at the end of the video like I'll turn my flashlight on and show you guys because it's just cute so that also got even like as I was rinsing my brush between colors and stuff like it got on the florals too so they're they're shimmery as well which again all for it because I've always said you can never have too much so I did very loose watercolor and went outside the lines and then you know painted little drippy bits on purpose um, honestly, I find this easier to do, like purposefully painting drippy bits than attempting, because I've done that over the years there. I, I know I have some really old videos out there that like trying to like create blobs of color, like at the top of a panel and like trying to, you know, make them drip that I actually find really difficult. This was easy for me, but also I've been coloring and watercoloring for 
a long time. So I just went outside the lines, created my little drippy bits. And then I was just swirling my brush in the palette and I did like a little bit of pink splatter, a little bit of purple splatter, a little bit of green splatter, just a bit, you know, because one, you can never have too much splatter either. <laughs> so once I was done watercoloring, I let it dry, which didn't take very long because this wasn't a very, you know, super large, like it's large in the sense of an A2 card, but it wasn't, you know, a very large, solid space so it didn't take long to dry and once it was dry I trimmed this down to roughly it was five and a half inches tall to cover an A2 card front and then I just trimmed the sides down to whatever they were on it honestly it doesn't really matter um because yeah so I trimmed it down and then I still had the image in my misty and I put my card base in my misty and this will be a top folding A2 white note card and I lined up my card base with the image and I inked it up with Simon's Seafoam Positively Saturated Inks. Just a nice pale aqua shade, which is one of my faves. And then after I stamped that, I took one of the sentiments from the stamp set and I lined that up and I'm going to stamp it with that same VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. And then I decided I was going to stamp the other sentiment right onto the watercolor panel. I was like in my head, I was like, oh, I'll heat emboss it, you know, die cut it with a circle, that sort of a thing. And then I'm like, no, I'll just stamp it. And because also if I messed it up, because, you know, it's like, oh, I've done all the watercoloring. But I was like, eh, if I do mess it up, I will stamp and heat emboss and glue it on top. <laughs> so it's like, that's, that's how you fix it, you know, but it's stamped. So we're good. And then I decided to take that seafoam ink and blend it around the perimeter because my I actually originally meant to do like kind of an underpainting of sort of a basically this color, you know, underneath before painting everything else. And I forgot because, you know, my brain is mush, but instead I just blended it. And my what I'm going to use for the background of this is some of Simon's Sea Glass cardstock, which is much more of a blue tint compared to this ink. So I just took the ink and blended it onto the cardstock just to make things a little more um a little more cohesive and then as is my current tradition I use my little Tim Holtz paper distressor to rough up the edges of this watercolor paper because I've just been kind of obsessed with that lately and I personally just find it funny because this used to be a thing you know way like 20 years ago you know, when I first started card making, this was like before we had wafer dyes, before we had anything, you know, back in the dark ages. <laughs> We had a paper distressor and a little bit of ribbon. That was it, you know, and our stamps. <laughs> anyway, I roughed up those edges. I adhered it to the panel of cardstock just with craft tacky glue. And then I wrapped some natural twine around um, the one side of the cardstock and then taped it into place on the back with washi tape because no one's going to see that. And then I grabbed a little bit more of that twine and I'm going to kind of thread it through what I've wrapped around the card front. This is an easier way than trying to, because I've you know shown that in videos, just wrapping and then tying in a knot. Depending on what direction you want your bow to go, sometimes you want to just wrap it like this and then tie the bow separately onto um, your twine, your ribbon, whatever it is you're using. So that way my bow is like in the, in the right position that I wanted. Anyway, tied that on there and then I'm going to adhere this panel to my card base and that's it. I meant it when I like this is this is as like clean and simple as I can get. <laughs> I didn't add any bling. I didn't. I thought about it. Trust me. I thought about it. I thought about it. But I was like, no, you know, he's I've got the shimmer, which I'm going to show here in a second. And yeah, you know, he's he's got his little bit of glitter and shimmer and the florals have it too. Just a little more subtle. I still managed to get splatter into there. Roughed out the edges, added the twine and and called it a day. So like I mentioned in the intro, I will have links below to this set to the uh, Colorado Craft Company brand because they, they do. They have so many sets by Anita Jerem. They're, they're adorable. Plus all their other sets, all the fun things. So I'll have links to that along with everything else I used in the description box below the video along with links to my social media, all that stuff. So you can check that out below if you were interested. Thank you all so very much for watching, for thumbs upping, commenting, subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you and I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.